Today saw the first tangible result of the Franco-British Defence Treaty agreed last autumn by Prime Minister David Cameron and his counterpart Nicolas Sarkozy. The two nations not only agreed to share training and research but more controversially are setting up a joint force to deploy overseas when in the interests of both countries. From the French Army Exercise Area, Jeff Mead sends this exclusive report. Lovely Libyan weather, joked soldiers from 7th Armoured, feeling the heat at the entrance to their brigade field HQ high in the Champagne region of France. Although the two nations are conducting airstrikes against Gaddafi's forces, this exercise is a new step forward in land cooperation, looking towards future conflicts when America may be less engaged overseas. So a French honour guard welcomed Britain's CGS to the training area where UK troops like these cold streamers are using French kit in the host nation's urban warfare school. As if that weren't enough to set Eurosceptic alarm bells ringing, Sir Peter's description of closer cross-channel cooperation certainly will. I've never been in any doubt about the similarities in terms of size, approach, doctrine, and uh, fighting characteristics of our two armies. We now have uh, a genuine reason to fuse those into a single force, which of course other nations could also append themselves to, but this, the intention is very much to produce a French-British core to this organisation. His aides claimed the general was only talking about the intended combined force, not advocating wider Anglo-French joint units. These days you'd be more likely to encounter the desert rats in Afghanistan than here in the high hot plains of northeastern France. But what's happening here could in the long term be just as significant as the fighting in Helmand, for they're in the vanguard of the formation of the biggest Franco-British force for more than 50 years. The Suez invasion, when Paris and London's armed intervention failed to prevent Egypt nationalising the canal, was perhaps not the most promising omen. In this age of combat cockpit video, the exercise called Flanders recalls earlier history when joint sacrifice overcame a common enemy. And it has shown Europe's two biggest armies now enjoy a mutual respect. You know, we are working together since a long time. I think there is no, no difference between our soldiers. We have good soldiers, we have very courageous soldiers. And I am very proud of my soldiers, and I think I am proud of my soldiers, as you are proved, proud of yours. Before the joint force stands up by 2016, there are plenty of problems. The French military only rejoined NATO in 2009. Decades of independence mean its security levels, IT systems and comms are not instantly compatible. Working how Bowman, our, our communication systems, works with their SIGF. And so there are workarounds for that, but it's still, you know, in its infancy and that's going to take a bit of time to, uh, to come through. But given political will, Sir Peter's single force will happen. The key question then, where and when it deploys? Who literally calls the shots? Jeff Mead, Forces News, Northern France.